Well, good evening, church. I hope everybody's doing well tonight. If you've tuned in looking for Pastor Mike or Brother Chris, uh, unfortunately, you are stuck with me for the next few minutes. Having a few. certainly hope so uh, but again I hope everybody uh, we again need to continue to remember our family so we want to lift them up and uh, just pray for them uh, right now when we pray prayer list and uh, we'll go to the Lord in prayer right now dear Heavenly Father dear God thankful for the beautiful sunshine dear god we're thankful for the thankful for whatever you send us because you know best dear god uh, you're in charge and we're not and thank you for that god uh, that our church has uh, we want to lift up and we just pray the best for them we again lift up our prayer sheet uh, those spoken and unspoken dear God you know uh, you know each of our church members hearts and mind dear God and we just pray uh, pray for all of those and we just ask a blessing on our dear community dear God again we love you we're thankful you've allowed us another day these things we ask in thy name amen well we'll have a short lesson here tonight and uh, before i begin i obviously want to cite a pretty pretty neat little thing that i come across uh, several days ago uh, when pastor mike asked i want to cite uh, brother kevin Colley. I think the church can can listen to and learn from the first verse is 2nd Corinthians chapter 5 verse 7 which states very short verse for we walk by faith not by sight the next verse is Romans chapter 10 verse 17 so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God so that is our two verses that we want to look at this evening and again cite brother Kevin Colley uh, for this little story but when I when I read it uh, it just really spoke to me so uh, it starts out, he talks about he bought a TV uh, a few years ago at Walmart. Everything was fine, and then just a few days ago, he says that uh, the TV quit working properly. He said it did something really strange. He would cut it on, and then a few minutes, few seconds, it never really was the same, but as soon as he cut it on, it would cut right back off. The picture was good, the, the, the reception was good. He said everything worked just like it should, but it would not stay on. He said so right now it's sitting useless in his house until he decides whether to throw it or throw it away or to have it fixed. And then here's where the lesson comes in and I just was, was amazed. Uh, 
says he's been thinking about that television and how some Christians have the same problem. It says, consider this, that there are some Christians who will, who do turn on for a short period of time, but then just as quick, they turn off again. Then something else will come along and it'll push the button and it will turn back on. But it goes right back off in a few minutes or seconds. Then he goes on and he talks about, he says he's thinking about those Christians who may not attend services regularly. And this, this really steps on our toes, uh, uh, us as Christian brothers and sisters. Says he's thinking about the Christians that only attend services every once in a while. They get all fired up, ready to ready to shake the church, and then they lose the luster and go right back into the world pattern of living. Says perhaps we can learn a few lessons from the on again, off again television. And he goes on and he says as he starts, he said it's extremely difficult to watch a television when it turns off after you just begin watching it. Then he says, consider the difficulty for the unbelievers to observe a Christian that is on again, off again. Could be an unbeliever watching us. Could be an unbeliever evaluating our behavior based on our own standards of right and wrong. He goes on to say, if I'm an off again, on again Christian, my behavior will not be consistent with the standards of Jesus. My speech won't be pure, he says. My lifestyle may not be pure. Perhaps relationships will be strained says people will see me as a hypocrite and not a true Christian. Christians, then he goes on and talks about Christians must live as Christians. And going back to the second Corinthians chapter five, verse seven, Paul says we walk by faith and that faith comes by hearing the word. That's the second verse in Romans ten seventeen. It says we must know God's word and we must live it in order to live the life of faith so that we won't be the on again, off again Christian. Then he goes on and we know that uh, if we're a true Christian and a born again believer we know how to do that we have to repent and he goes on here and he goes he repents and Paul told all of those he taught both Jews and Gentiles to turn to God and do the works worthy of repentance that's in Acts says, Peter told Simon the sorcerer is willing to forgive if Obviously, we know the verse in the first time we get to do what we want. But he will forgive us 70 times 7 in one day if our repentance is truly from our heart. And we can't hide our heart from God.
God knows our heart. God knows our mind. He knows when we are truly trying to repent. This is one of the greatest incentives to live like a Christian every day. We are not perfect. We hopefully no one claims to be. The only perfect person was Jesus Christ, and we know how it turned out for him. They crucified him. The author goes on then, and he goes, Thirdly, just as the on-again, off-again television is useless, the on-again, off-again Christian can be useless to Jesus too. It says if he fails to repent, he'll be like the Laodiceans in Revelations chapter 3, verse 16. Jesus said, because they were lukewarm, and I'm sure we've all heard this story and read the verses, because they were lukewarm, he would spew them out of his mouth. And that goes on, and no man having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. We can't live in the past and turn around and worry about the past. We've got to be worried about the present and what's in front of us. It says Jesus' message in Matthew chapter 25 is that the on-again, off-again Christian will find himself with the unfaithful in our final judgment. I don't want to be on that side, and I pray you don't either, church. Then as he concludes, he talks about, he said he really doesn't know what to do with his television. But he goes on and he goes, whether I throw it away or whether I get it fixed, he said, through this analogy, he said, let's hope and resolve and decide not to be the on-again, off-again Christian. When God pushes our buttons, he expects us to stay on and not give up. If we do turn off, let's repent and turn back on quickly. We don't want to disappoint him. And uh, church, I hope that's our prayer tonight. Uh, we're all undeserving. But if we try to live our daily life as in we're trying not to disappoint Jesus, and we keep our focus on what is in front of us, I believe we'll do better. So again, I hope, I hope maybe something here was said tonight. Again, Psych Kevin, uh, hopefully something was said here tonight that might strike a nerve or a uh, light bulb goes off, but uh, let's not be an on-again, off-again Christian, church. How about that? As we conclude tonight, I'll close us in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, again, we're just thankful you've allowed us another day. We're thankful for these words uh, that you've presented before us tonight, dear God, these two short, simple verses, but with much meaning. And it is our prayer, dear God, that Piney Level Church and all the churches, dear God, and all the Christians uh, in the world today will not be an on-again, off-again Christian, that we will be on for you every day, Sunday, through Saturday, not just one or two days of the week. We want to be on for you, dear God, each and every day. And that's our prayer this evening. And we just ask a blessing on our church that we can continue to be a lighthouse into the community. We want to lift up again the prayer request, dear God, please be with our pastor, his family. And we just uh, pray that you watch over us and protect us until we can meet again Sunday morning. It's in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Church, I hope you have a good evening, a good rest of your week, and we hope to see you Sunday.